not obviously obvious. It's not a nice place to be. You know, um, not obviously obvious. Let's think about that for a minute. How does that work? So, basically, what I mean is subtly, obviously different. A way of behavior that is a little bit different and unexpected and um, is only different and not expected but gets um, framed and stuck into boxes that it doesn't belong because it looks like the closest thing to such and such or the closest thing to like me looking at you and then looking away when I say, say something back is lying you know or the closest thing to me fidgeting is I have something to hide or you know um, I'm flat not because I'm tired but because I'm angry at you or I'm being impertinent you know people on the autism spectrum that sort of had no choice but to try their best to sort of mimic um, you know vo voice inflections and sentence structure and speech but still have divergent expressions and reactions and brain processing they are not obviously obvious in other words subtly obvious and it's not a nice place to be it's not it's a place that gets us misjudged constantly um, completely thwarts the ability to communicate we can't ever completely play by the social rules when we process differently for God's sakes I mean what do these people want I mean it's it's cruel to think that we are being held to bad behavior simply because we are trying our best to speak their language when we speak a different language inside our heads therefore what you're seeing in that divergent behavior with facial expressions gestures body language you're seeing not expected things because we are not fluent I mean it's it's hard enough for us to try and concentrate on saying the right thing and maintaining the basic sentence structure and you know aptly mimicking the voice tone and we do all that we learn how to do that quite well which is kind of a double-edged sword because we still have the subtle differences in our processing which are subtly obvious and these are the things that frame us and put us in all these other mental health categories now imagine that on top of this there's comorbid mental health um, issues due to trauma and bad experiences from people repeatedly misinterpreting us and treating us badly and as though we've done something what do you think happens to somebody when they're constantly treated as though they're bad and they've done something or constantly treated with an air of disrespect because they're just not up to par in terms of their their way of communication they're just not quite right they're not quite good enough what do you think happens to somebody do you think they're not going to be you know neurotic or hyper vigilant or despondent or anxious or depressed or maybe have a few comorbid mental health challenges due to the trauma of having to grow up experiencing that on a constant basis yeah of course somebody's gonna not come out of that without scars and so that person is walking and hobbling with injuries and they're already different and now you're double judging them double judging you know like a person is going to have obviously if autistic people process differently they're going to express your typical general mental health comorbids a little differently too neuroses OCD depression anxiety mood imbalance 
interpersonal, all kinds of stuff. So obviously if somebody is already divergent in the way they process, they're going to express those mental health challenges a little differently. But they already seem weird to you. So when you imagine the added effect of a negative effect on the brain, you're already up here, so then you look double guilty. When, ironically, help and understanding is needed crucially at that point. But of course, instead of that happening, um, the exact opposite happens. It's like an abused puppy and the puppy starts, you know, dragging its leg and kind of growling and putting its tail between its legs. What does that puppy need? It needs to be fed. It needs to be given water. It needs to be gently but carefully with boundaries, you know, coerced into trusting that it's okay, it's not poison, it's just food but shown the food in the first place. Not further starved. And then when the puppy is whimpering and dragging its broken leg, the person goes, oh, how dare you have a broken leg, you stupid puppy, and then kicks it. That's kind of how autistics with mental health issues are treated. And it really, really needs to stop. I am a survivor of it. Okay, I speak from personal experience. I should be... A lot of people that have experienced what I've experienced, we lose all trust. We may become permanently cynical and walled up and agoraphobic. And that's a nice, that's a soft version of it, frankly. I mean, healing is possible and healing is great, but it sure as hell is hard to heal when you keep asking for help and you want to heal and you put your hand out there to hope that maybe somebody will put something nice in it and they keep going like that. What do you think is going to happen? After a while, you just don't put your hand out. You put your hands here and you never take them out again. You lose all hope that people can be good. Is there hope to heal when there is so much risk to be further hurt in the process of asking for help? Yes. But this is why it's so crucial that Aspies don't hurt each other. And unfortunately, sometimes we do. Even though I can tell you right now that I hold anger, I try, I strive to not take it out on another person. I haven't been perfect. And in my past, I hurt people, especially when I was drinking. But where do you seek help from when there's a lot of risk of getting further hurt? You pick your outlets that you love. For me, it's music. I'm about to go frolic and frolic in the fields of my electric guitar and my mini Korg and my computer composition program and my journal songwriting poetry journal and my designs and whatever because I need my art right now with all of what I've been through the past like few years especially with the horrific trauma that that psychiatrist put me through when all I was trying to do is ask for some mental health help for my chronic pain problem. After the troll, atta troll attacks and, you know, a combination of um, burying my own hurt in an attempt to just help others thinking that I could somehow 
not have to deal with my own hurt. But unfortunately, we all have to deal with our own hurt, whether we lash out on people or whether we um, are totally the opposite and doormat ourselves and over caretake to escape our own pain. There is hope for healing in a, you know, certain places. Like when seeking, when looking for the right help, you have to be really um, very careful. Just be aware if you've been hurt before, it's easy to say there is no help, there's no point. And to just be angry and cynical and to just give up. And to just decide that society is perfect. I so want to. What I do have to accept is that some people are just total feelingless jerks. And that will never change. But there are also good people out there. And I cannot forget that there are good people out there. But what I do need to do is be very selective about people. And also be careful not to try and pull on those people too much but to not isolate. It's such a balance. You don't, a lot of us, we develop so much scar tissue in the way of neediness that we avoid seeking help because we're afraid we're going to pull on somebody too hard. We've done it in the past and scared people away. It takes a really special and skilled person to be able to look through that, set boundaries with you so that they don't end up hurt themselves and pillaged and depleted, but make it very clear to a rejection-sensitive, hurting person that they are not rejecting you and that they do care. It actually takes talent, to be honest. Skill isn't even enough. And I hate to blow my own horn, but I think I'm pretty damn good at that. I'm, I am good at it. I'm really good at helping other people. It's just <laughs> like anyone, I'm not that great at helping myself compared. But it's time for me to help myself. And I haven't been. I've just been burying everything. I, I have to set boundaries and take time. I have to just tell people that I'm super limited. I don't want to go and I'm not going to go completely but I will have these limits and they have to be there for now otherwise I just you know I've been burnt out forks wise for a long time but I've been in denial and constantly there's a voice in my back the back of my head saying you should be doing more you should be guilty, 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 guilty. But you know what? I have done so much and I've worked so hard and really there's so much of my materials that people can go and look at and read and it's all available for free. I mean, yes, it is buyable too, but it's all there for free. Not obviously obvious. That's the line that I've always walked. And it is a painful place to be. The expression of autism is worse with the trauma and the trying. You know, sorry to go back to the song, let it go, but let it go, don't hold it back anymore, I don't care what they say. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. Think for a period of time, if someone's been repressing their feelings too long, they need to let out their emo all the time and channel it into art and the way they dress and the way they express and that is so much better than trying to put on this nice girl next door thing 
that I tried to do for so long and bury all that extreme hurt inside. And even after Dr. did what she did to me, I tried to bury it and just give up on my health care. And that's biting me in the ass right now. So we don't need to look outwardly so much for help. We just need to find our outlets and balance that with a few selective people and or groups that you know have healthy boundaries are unconditionally caring and loving although still have boundaries have both skill and personal experience and heart and have been have survived themselves and are in a good place with it are now not even just surviving but are now thriving those are the kinds of people like mentoring you know a little bit I think Aspies do well with that kind of thing but because of our fork limits and with social interactions it just needs to be selective definitely need to select something or a couple things but it has to be very selective and uh, right now I choose my art and I choose a break and from there we'll see like I choose no it's not a choice actually I need to start managing my health because <laughs> I'm getting pretty sick and I can manage my health I just to be honest kind of gave up a little bit after I I'd given up and that's how I got sick in England but then I got home and everything just fell through as per what my petition says about it I gave up again kind of because it just feels like I'm drowning with all of the foods and the you know constant compression tights and the you know exercise I have no idea what to do for it my priority right now is to complete the correction package need to complete the correction package and the annotation file that will appeal my case and need to do it because I have so much evidence that I don't have factitious disorder and all this so much evidence including all of the massive complaints and bad experiences other people have had with this woman there's just so much evidence that it's just um, been something that I buried my head in the sand because it was so painful. I read all of my you know old files about how this health system interpreted me when I was a kid, a suffering teenager, being treated really badly by abusive people, and I was coming into the psych ward and they were treating me so bad and judging me so badly. It it just I just couldn't go through with that. <laughs> it's time to face my case. It's time to take care of me. It's time to do some a major shift. It's time. And that in itself has been not obviously obvious.